ACAST powers the world's best podcasts. Here's a show that we recommend. Hey, I'm Kim Holderness. And I'm Ben Holderness. We host the Holderness Family Podcast every Tuesday. You may know us from the silly videos that we make online. Or a book about marriage called Everybody Fights. Or as winners of season 33 of The Amazing Race. Still can't believe that happened. Listen, we do a lot of stuff, but our podcast is our most favorite thing. Yeah, because every week we get to sit down face-to-face, talk to each other about marriage, family, mental health, or just anything that we want to know more about. Sometimes we have expert interviews, sometimes it's just us, but our goal is to bring some joy and laughter into your life every week. Our other goal is that maybe you will learn something as well. Right. So search the Holderness Family Podcast and check out our most recent episodes. We have one about staying organized with creators of the Home Edit. And one about being diagnosed with ADHD as an adult. We hope you'll join us. ACAST helps creators launch, grow, and monetize their podcasts everywhere. ACAST.com. Hi, it's Dave here and I'm with my wife, Kathy. Hello. And we're with our baby, Oscar. He just can't say hello yet. <laughs> no. um, we're going to a parent baby screening of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. We're on the bus. Um, yeah, a bit elaborate because it's quite hard to find a parent baby screening that actually runs on the weekend. Most of them run during the week. And we really wanted to go to the cinema together. So Clapham Picture House does it on a Sunday. So if anyone listening to us knows of any other parent baby screenings that are on the weekend in like greater London area, please let us know. We yeah, are excited for this one. We haven't been to a parent baby screening with Oscar in a few months, so we're not sure what how it will go down. Yeah, because <laughs> he's uh, he's a lot older now. Yeah. And, I mean, before he used to just kind of sit there and uh, <laughs> sleep well, mostly yeah. really, or just be quite content. But now he's at an age where he just uh, doesn't he just doesn't like to sit still no. for more than two minutes at a time. So interesting. But anyway, yeah, we're excited to see this movie. We saw the last one in Sydney a couple of years ago. Uh, on a very hot yeah. day, I remember. So we were happy about the aircon. It's my main memory of the movie. And I remember we quite uh, we kind of enjoyed it. I mean, it was kind of, kind of ultimately pointless and had some really silly bits, i.e., the high heels. The um, high Bryce Dallas Howard running around in high heels was one of my biggest irks of cinema that year. But um, I but enjoyed it. It was better. It, it was another one again that just showed off how great Chris Pratt is in that kind of role. I kind of feel like I'm over his shtick now. Though. I feel like yeah. it's just the same in every film. Like I don't know if I need more. Um, sort of uh, quippy charming uh, Peter Quill type it's a funny one because like the original Jurassic Park is so great and we rewatched that a couple of years ago remember you bought them on Blu-ray and we watched it on Blu-ray and then that was amazing and then they kind of went downhill then they brought back this reboot which ended up to us being more enjoyable than it should have been and now this one's a, reboot, a bit it was a sequel, or a sequel so. and now this one's like a bit of a cash in funnily we saw Chris um I've just banked on his name, even though I've just said it. We saw Chris Pratt when he was in London last year when we lived in Richmond. He was filming this. Remember, we we were actually doing an episode of the cinema. We went to see um, yeah, because King they Kong. Were living in, um, was it King Kong? Richmond at the time. So we saw him and Anna Faris, R.I.P. Um, to their dead. relationship, not her. <laughs> um, we saw them in this, this disgusting cinema in Richmond, going to see something. Can't remember what, which was quite fun for us. But yeah, this movie, I'm just like. I'm excited we're going to a parent baby screening. I think that's about the height of my interest in the See, movie. when Jurassic World came out in 2015, there had been a huge gap between that and Jurassic Park mm-hmm. 3. I think people were quite hungry for it, and as such, it became, uh, quite, who knows what the details are, one of the biggest box office successes of all time. Phenomenally huge, bigger than anyone anticipated. Yeah. But now, I'm just like, that hunger isn't there. We've had our sort of dinosaur fix I think so yeah. I'm, not, I'm not particularly excited it's However, a bit like the Star Wars for tea you know there was a huge gap that came back everyone was so excited and now there's been so many Star Wars and you know two in the space of a year and now you know people are a little bit over that and I feel like with this well two in the space of six months I yeah. feel like I'm just co- pedantically correcting you you are pedantically for, uh, mansplaining me but technically and the, um, last year that was 2017 okay Daddy. sorry I'm Dave. just anticipating the uh, out- outrageous Twitter reaction to, to your mistake <laughs> and I think the other thing as well is the original Jurassic Park it's like dinosaurs are really scary you know but I have actually I don't usually oh you're not scared of dinosaurs no, anymore I usually don't watch trailers for movies but I've seen this trailer and um, it's like, kind of like the dinosaur like we're supposed to be sympathetic to the dinosaur and the dinosaur is like our friend and I'm not really into that I want a scary dinosaur that is out to kill everyone are you sure you weren't watching Barney uh, Barney the Friendly Dinosaur no I'm not sure or Denver the last dinosaur remember him I wasn't watching those he's your friend and a whole lot more so I just don't think I'm that into this really but I'm excited for the parent baby screen that said uh, this has a brilliant director attached to it okay uh, whose name I'm blanking (laughs) Uh, but he's the the, top notch podcasting as good as ever 
Uh, here, actually, I've got IMDb here. He's J.A. Bayona. Never heard of He's him. He's a Spanish director okay. who directed one of our favourite horror movies of all time, The Orphanage. Oh, I love The Super Orphanage. <gasps> That's a terrifying movie. Dos, tres. <laughs> uh, everyone should watch that if they yeah, haven't already. Really and he also directed um, The Impossible in 2012, which you haven't seen. No. But, um, uh, Ewan McGregor and um, Tsunami movie Tsunami movie yeah. and that was super like he's an amazing director okay you're raising uh, my hopes a bit so I'm quite I'm quite impressed I think if he could show us some things we haven't seen before with dinosaurs I'll be kind of happy despite the fact this movie shouldn't exist okay. but anyway we're also running super late so we're hoping that this, uh, this bus gets us there we're hoping the bus gets us on time because we forgot how hard it is to get out of Clapham Junction with the buggy oh my god it took us about 25 minutes of different lifts uh, there's so many exits there's so many exits but anyway this is not a train station review podcast no although million dollar idea what train station reviews yeah yeah how many lifts do they have that sort of thing um, and we asked a kind man in the shop which way our bus stop was and he directed us to the entirely wrong end of the bus station yeah so if you're listening <laughs> uh, by some chance that man in that shop yeah <laughs> you know what you did you know you, you know did. you didn't well, send we know us to st john's are. road yeah all right anyway, on, let's, bye. let's get off bye it was all a lie the man who proved raptors can follow orders you never thought how many millions a trained predator might be once? They're gonna sell them. Not blue. They need it for something else. What is that thing? They made it. This is the most dangerous creature that ever walked the earth. I say we shut this whole thing down. Hey, girl. You think what I'm thinking? Genetic power has now been unleashed. You can't put it back in the box. Right, so we are out of uh, Jurassic Park 4, Part 2. <laughs> it's actually the fifth installment, isn't it? Uh, fifth, yes. Yeah. This is the fifth Jurassic Park wow. movie. Uh, it's a glorious day here. We're walking through Clapham Commons. Yes, beautiful. Uh, everyone's out in the sunshine. People are eating ice cream. But we just spent two and a half hours in the dark. <laughs> yes. Uh, with a lot of screaming babies. Yeah, the Babies are well behaved though. I think it was actually a movie for kids to enjoy, even very young kids. Like Oscar seemed <laughs> what? Really? particularly enamoured by all the movement and the animals on screen, I think. Like I've been to a lot more of these screenings than you have and like the babies by normal standards we're quite quiet in this one okay so this you think this is very much suitable for children under one <laughs> yes what you're saying. Yeah. very yeah. suitable well there's just a lot of action and you know movement on screen and stuff Oscar seemed a lot more engaged with this movie than, than I've seen him with any other movie the before. least engaged he's ever been is when I went to the Winston Churchill movie he hated that one <laughs> so boring even to a baby <laughs> sorry Gary Oldman okay so um, um, for anyone who doesn't know I mean do we need to explain what this movie is if you don't know it's a Jurassic World movie. There's dinosaurs in it. Yeah. I'm not even going to bother explaining the plot, but no. let's describe before well, we get I to spoiler street. Well, I think the plot's street. interesting, okay, because I didn't actually know the plot. Um, and I'm just going to give some brief feelings on this movie because I don't think I have much to say about it. Um, say that every time. Half yeah. an hour later, we'll be in a heated debate. <laughs> will. Um, so I think the fundamental flaw of this movie is that the premise, the very first movie, Jurassic Park, is such a good movie and it's such a perfect mix of everything that makes a fantastic blockbuster and I know we were kids when it came out so we would have been you know particularly attached to it but it was a very simple premise somebody's made a fantastic kind of Disneyland but instead of you know rides it's dinosaurs and now the dinosaurs are rebelling and it's amazing like that's such a cool thing and like for a kid to get behind it's a really simple plot there's like genuine peril it's really fun it's directed by Steven Spielberg, so it looks amazing, and it has a beautiful score. Like, that's a, you know, a pretty perfect blockbuster. And then they get diluted and diluted, and then, as we said, the reboot came back last time, and again, I enjoyed... Sequel. sequel. I enjoyed it, because it, it captured all that stuff about being in the park again, which some of the sequels have been missing. But now this movie is like, okay, what do we do after the park again? It's the exact same problem the last one's had. And honestly, and I hate to sound trite, but it's completely jumped the dinosaur because it's just pathetic. <laughs> oh, how long have you been thinking of that? <laughs> For at least the last hour of the movie. I was like, I cannot wait to say that. It's just, and you know, at the start, we were both like, we actually turned to each other and said, oh, we're really enjoying this. And like, it had the music, it had the visuals. And then it just went on and it got more and more convoluted. And the plot is like, for some reason, 
all the dinosaurs in the park are about to be killed and the reason is oh there's a volcano right so nature's just helping them out with the plot here and all the dinosaurs need to be rescued and of course we need Bryce Dallas Howard and Chris Pratt to do that cue them getting back together the gang's back together um, Chris Pratt needs to be there because of his special relationship with the dinosaur from the last one and then we'll get into the rest of the plot and spoiler street but already it's a mess of a plot it's not a plot that you can you know do an elevator pitch on and I found it intensely irritating almost immediately um, Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard back together again they're just so lame like for a couple who would have been together and like very recently broke up their banter is completely lacking and completely empty and makes no sense you would never root for them as a couple quick point on that and this is um, this is the problem um, they just reset their relationship yeah. for Jurassic World so Jurassic like you World you break up with somebody and then just have two minutes of banter and you're over it but that's, that's what happened in Jurassic World if anyone remembers three years ago remember. they're working on the island together but they had a relationship oh and really? Then, yeah it's the exact same thing and then they meet up and it's like well you broke up with me that time and this isn't a spoiler for this movie because this is in the trailer and this time she goes to him and we're like hey we, we dated again that second time but now we've broken up again and it was just like what? Yeah, come on that was a it. mess um, and now I have to say honestly I can't remember the last movie um, the main thing I remember about the last movie was like a really fun scene with the two little boy characters in like a round circle thing that was like going through a park with loads of dinosaurs around them and I really liked that scene and that's essentially all I remember and obviously Bryce Dallas Howard running around that's all you remember that's all I remember but I remember enjoying it but this was just you know at the start it's like yeah they're visually impressive yeah I'm enjoying the movie and then it just dawned on me but actually this was all done in the early 90s in the first movie like yes of course visually it looks good but they're spending hundreds of millions of dollars on it like it's not impressive that it looks good anymore it was impressive in the first movie when it was quite groundbreaking what they did with the dinosaurs this is just boring I don't care I didn't care about any of it as it went on I had less and less fun with it it got more and more convoluted and I just think like the whole thing's a shame really and I think they shouldn't have wasted their time Okay, um, so you weren't a fan. I see. It's it's like I, I in the moment I was kind of enjoying it, and I really enjoyed like our family outing to the cinema and completely. You know, if you just sat there and let it wash over you, and you just want to go and see a dinosaur movie, great. But I honestly think if you've older kids, just show them the first one because the first one's magical and this one's convoluted and dull. Okay, I uh, I think I had a lot more fun with this than you did. I think I largely enjoyed this as a as a movie, and I think it's a it's quite a well put together movie and it's a very enjoyable action movie I thought and there were some super action scenes in this like absolutely brilliant I thought and some very uh, visually inventive stuff some of the framework in this is the, the some of the shots that were clearly storyboarded and are and put together by Bayona are just lovely and they'll stick yeah, in my memory and, I'll, and I'll go through all of them in Spoiler Street so I actually had a good time with this but I think I can't help but agree with you in that this, the whole thing is like, it's, I mean, 25 years ago was Jurassic Park. And this is, this can't help but live in its shadow. And we've seen all this before. And there's a, uh, there's a moment, this isn't a spoiler, there's a moment in this where a character uh, sees a dinosaur for the first time. So she has never seen a, a dinosaur before. And they, it's the Brontosaurus, you know, the really big one with the tall neck. Yeah, and that was a nice and scene, but like we've no, seen this before. is what well, I disagree. Yeah. Um, they, they, they try to recapture the uh, Sam Neill and Laura Dern moment uh, where they, they where they first see the the Brontosaurus in Jurassic Park, and that is honestly that's one of the greatest moments in cinematic history. It's the Spielberg look uh, focuses on their face you know he, the way Sam Neill sort of just fumbles his his sunglasses off his face as he cannot believe what he's seeing yeah that's the kind of chilling cinematic moment but also we that, couldn't believe what we were seeing then because it was amazing and we'd never seen anything like that on screen exactly because they were at the cutting course, now edge now we've seen it fucking five times and Excuse I felt language. I just remember the, in this experience watching that character and just being like oh, I don't care I don't, I don't need to see another character seeing a dinosaur for the first time yeah. and all this is doing is paling in, in comparison um, that said I I, mean, I think I've kind of said it I, I enjoyed it I thought this was I thought this was a bit of fun it, I kind of feel like this the way I feel about Solo uh, when we saw that a couple of weeks ago in that this movie does not need to exist no. nobody really wants this movie no one ever wanted this um, but because money 
this has to happen um so we're kind of just stuck with it and i feel like if if we weren't doing this podcast then we, I probably wouldn't have even bothered to go to well, that. I would have caught it in a couple of years. We just like we wanted TV. to go to a parent baby screening, and this is what they were showing today. Yeah. Um, and I, and again, I love that experience, and I'm so glad that the Clapham Picture House does it on a weekend because, as I said, no one seems to do that. And it was a much nicer mix. Like there was loads of dads in the audience today, um, and it felt like a really nice event. So for us, it's a lovely family event. But it was a nice outing, and it's like, but like I said about Solo, doesn't need to exist shouldn't have existed nobody wanted but and box office is fun. reflecting for both of them the fact that there's just a lack of interest no I think this is doing well isn't it I don't think this is doing well this is breaking festival. records internationally this one is I'm pretty sure oh unless you okay. see differently sorry maybe I haven't done my research uh, I mean I don't really follow the box office stuff so maybe I'm wrong uh, please correct us if we're wrong yeah. on, on Twitter at the cinema <laughs> um, but I, well, ha- I, had, I had fun I, d- I had despite myself I had fun. It was a, it's a really accomplished action movie with some great stuff I've never seen before and some great scenarios of, of action moments. Yeah, and but they were all... And we'll talk about it in Spoiler Street, but most of the scenes were just existing because characters are making really, really dumb decisions to the point where at one point it felt to me like a horror movie, you know, where it's a bit of a trope in horror movies where characters do silly things and you shout at them on the screen. It even looked and felt a bit like that at the end. And I was enjoying it up... Up, up until rel- maybe the last hour but there was just another thing that I really lacked which was humour like I found it very dry there was no laughter in the house watching this it's all like it's so much of it is spent trying to build Chris Pratt up to be this amazing character and we both turned to each other and said like he's essentially a Nicholas Sparks character or a Mills and Boone hero <laughs> yeah. like we okay. meet him this is not a spoiler right this is just the setup to what Chris Pratt's up to at the start of the movie <laughs> he's building his own house like nobody does that right because what's his actual profession? He's some sort of dinosaur trainer. So why is he building his own house? He is not a builder. Because so that just really a, annoys because me. Because he's a rugged man he's and he's good with his man. hands. And all he did in the last movie was like drive around in a motorbike. This movie, he can do anything he puts his mind to physically. He's such a man's man. He's also really funny, you know. When he's facing death's door, he still cracks jokes. And to the point where I don't know how much fake tan they thought he needed in this movie. But he's a glowingly orange at this point. He doesn't even look attractive. And I know that sounds really bitchy as someone who thinks he's attractive. Just thought, what have they done to him? They've turned him into a, like a 2D joke of a character. And then Bryce Dallas Howard, who we just saw in the new um, Arrested Development episodes, which aren't particularly good. Um, I, I was watching those episodes thinking, she's not very good in these. She's kind of, she's hamming it up a bit. It's yeah, a lot like of, she's there's a lot a of overacting actress. in this. Yeah. I talked earlier about the, um, the, the Spielberg moment and people's reactions, you know, and it's like, oh, you know, you zoom in in their, their eyes and it's all about their faces. She does that at one point when she sees a house. I know. It was like Cinderella <laughs> going to the ball, right? <laughs> she, she gets out, out of a car house. at a particularly big house. <laughs> and she's like, my God. <laughs> we both laughed. Actually, that was what? the only laugh I got. So she steps out like the Cinderella going to the ball or exactly like that scene in um, Fifty Shades. What was the new Fifty Shades movie called? Fifty Shades Freed. When Anastasia sees the new house Christian bought her without asking, even though they're married. That's the same reaction she had to this house. It was a complete and utter joke. It's really weird. It's like, lady, you're here to save a species of dinosaurs. You're not here to admire real estate. It was ridiculous. So, that, look, that I, I, I'm, I think you're coming down a little harsh on both of them, to be fair. I thought they both did a perfectly fine job. Yeah, but would you, watch, thought, e, would you watch either of their performances? And, you know, I'm not blaming them. It probably wasn't a great script, but I do think it was well enough directed, to be fair. Like, would was, you really I come thought away? the director is the star of this show Compared to the last movie When we walked out of that going Oh my god Chris Pratt's such a superstar He's so funny He's so awesome This one was like Yeah Chris Pratt's probably phoning it in And getting paid ten times more Than he did in the last movie I thought he was a totally serviceable action hero serviceable I, be- I believed word. him I believed him as the, the sort of heroic guy Jumping through and doing somersaults And all this kind of stuff I guess he was more Indiana Jones in this one Whereas the last one He had a lot of the interaction with the animals Which was lovely which I really enjoyed. I thought it was totally fine. The, a lot of the comedy, they rely on a, com- a new comic relief character who's sort of the computer hacker guy who's a fish out of water. Yeah, and, I liked him. But it's a lot of... St- the, the comedy's stayed. It's very... Uh, oh, make sure you wear bug spray. It's like the comedy's <laughs> stuck in the 90s, isn't it? It's so hot. Yeah. Yeah, it's just felt very, very outdated. It just didn't um, work. But what I did enjoy, actually, was the diversity on screen. 
Yes. Yeah, not a... everyone was white. Not everyone was a man. So I did enjoy that. And I do like that Jeff Goldblum was in it as well. However, that's they not... needed him. Is that, is that to this movie's credit these days? Or is that is that just par for the course now? And Which I think is a good thing. Well, that we well, are just seeing it as par for the course. Yeah, but so I'm not going to say, hey, well done, Universal. You're no, really I'm not paving congratulating them. I'm just saying I noted it and I liked it. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I think let's just move on to Spoiler Street because let's get into the Well, the it's Spoiler Park here. at the moment. Spoiler Common, actually. Clapham Common. Spoiler Common. <laughs> uh, doesn't have the same ring to it as Spoiler Street. Spoilers now for Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Which, even as I was watching it, I was thinking, what's the name of this movie again? Jurassic Park 5? I can't remember. Well, at least it's better. At least they added a tagline onto the end of the movie, unlike uh, the new Halloween movie which is just called Halloween yeah. <laughs> even though that's also a sequel it's not a reboot well at least Halloween is more is less a sequel and more like how many movies in 11 yeah it's so Halloween you, 11. I think when you're on the 11th iteration of a movie you can go back to the original I think when you're on the 5th no, you can't, iteration it's you can't go back to the 4th it's not a reboot they the, should have just called it Jurassic or wait oh no the first one's called Jurassic Park it could have been called Jurassic World 2 yeah or Jurassic Park 4 Part 2 which I made at the top of this show uh, uh, that's not my joke that's Tom Silcock former guest of this show's joke so, I didn't even uh, notice you making credit to joke. him I'm not I'm not plagiarizing <laughs> Kathy doesn't even listen no. to me why do you even come on this podcast okay because we're married I'm gonna I'm gonna say some of the things I thought really stuck in my memory um, the whole lava stuff I thought was great from beginning to end yeah I love uh, it's that in, it's in the trailer the, the, the volcano exploding stuff uh, maybe it's 15, 20 minutes of this movie and it was great and there's a lot of like inventive stuff in here the um, Chris Pratt lying on the ground paralysed as lava slowly, that slowly moves cool. towards him I That's mean and he did setup. that very well because he's a very physical actor I thought he did that really well because he'd been paralysed because he was shot with whatever and then I loved all the stuff with him and Bryce Dallas Howard and the, the nerdy computer guy trying to run away they get into the ball the ball's in the sea they're trying to get out of the sea and there's some lovely little effects of the... Um, Molten hitting the like the sa- this the sound effect of the molten rocks hitting the top of their thing as they're underwater. Yeah, that was cool. It was like it was beautifully directed, lovely storyboard. It's the kind of stuff that that Spielberg was famous for. These lo- like amazingly choreographed action sequences. Also, in terms of just sheer visuals, the uh, the moment when the lava hits and Bryce Dallas Howard and the computer guy are in the lab the and computer then, guy he will always be known as I did not catch his <laughs> who name knows, who knows what his name is the computer guy who the, puts bug spray on himself hilariously the uh, the lava starts dripping through and then they look through this tunnel when they hear the noise and they're, and they're like oh, what, what is it and they can't see and then you slowly see this dinosaur being silhouetted by drops of molten lava yeah, coming through cool. the tunnel that's a lovely visual and Actually, there were you know so what? many of those I enjoy I've just remembered what I when I was really enjoying it and when we turned to each other and said oh this is great I enjoyed it all up until they came off the island and that's when it fell apart for me yeah I, can't, yeah, I kind of agree with you I think that, that was the original stuff and then it was just all silly nonsense that whole sequence was um, well it was basically the lost world the second Jurassic Park just, just, just the first half of the movie was that and then the second half was like Resident Evil just set in a house and do you uh, know what it looked like Lara Croft's house in the new Lara did. Croft movie didn't I it I was that. like if they used the same set um, but the, the other the, there are a couple of other visuals that really stood out to me there's a great moment where they're in the house in the second half and uh, they're with Macy the girl and they're they're hiding in the dinosaur museum in all the exhibits um, and the lights have been cut out and then suddenly the lights come back on but they're inside one of the exhibits and they can't see out so she's just seeing her own reflection and then suddenly you see the hybrid dinosaur slowly coming into focus and it was melded with her face yeah that was, was cool super super visual what did you think of the fact that okay A I loved the little girl character and when I was a kid I would have loved her and I liked that they brought back a kid lead even though it's not in this theme park setting um, so I thought she was really good and she was like I thought she was great a little bit Nancy Drew going around um, Harriet the Spy all the girls I loved when I was younger but then they just throw in this random plot that she's a clone <laughs> and I was like what's that got to do yeah. with anything now I get it's a Michael Crichton novel and he or based on originally his novel and he likes writing about things like that but it didn't add anything to this movie and it kind of felt like a little bit of a desperate attempt to like have something to do have if they twist. decide to do a, a sequel I think because it it's like she's a clone all right and then that's it well this movie is to be fair to the movie it is all about um science taking advantage of uh, of this for for different ends for medicinal or war or whatever it was the um 
and it's they keep on about the genetic this is the genetic wave of the future and they're mixing dinosaurs so it didn't it, I don't, to be fair I didn't, it didn't feel a million miles away from what the movie was doing it just felt a bit unnecessary and it didn't add to anything it didn't add anything and for yeah. ages her granddad kept hiding these photographs of her mother in a photo album yeah, well, so all he does all day is sit around <laughs> looking at photos of her mother but we were like who's waiting for the reveal of this photograph I thought it must be Lara Dern maybe or maybe the kid from the first movie but then I thought but why would no one would recognize her so I love how she's bother? like Grand- grandfather do I look like my mother uh, as he's looking at a photo of her and he's like yep checks out yep you look very much like her can I have a look no I'm afraid sorry close the book and get out child grandfather why have I never seen a photograph of my mother <laughs> So and why stupid. do I have this very fake English accent? <laughs> By the end, she'd completely lost and was American. Did you notice that? There's a lot of English actors in here yeah. putting on American accents, and then I don't know. I don't know that actress. Maybe she. Maybe she is English to her credit. Yeah, so they, but they, Toby they, Jones is in here with um, the most amazing white teeth I've ever seen an amazing comb over that flapped in the wind as he was being <laughs> murdered was by great. dinosaurs. He, he was, was really great. good. It was really fun. The other the English guy, guy who I think he's he's what's he from? He's one of those that guys. He's definitely in one day, right? The Anne Hathaway thing. Yeah, you talk away there while I'm... Oh, while you IMDb it. him. He played... I think he played a comedian in that. I think... All oh, right, now I'm just waffling. He's in loads of things anyway. He was kind Rafe of the Spall. main... Dave Spall. Rafe Spall. Rafe Spall. Oh, yeah, so he's the main he's very good. Yeah, I, like I enjoyed him. him. I like him. Great. I was hoping him and Bryce Dallas would have a bit of a... Something going on. No, come on. I, can we can we admit if anybody didn't call that he was the villain from the second? I didn't. Edition? What? I was really surprised by the twist. That's just, I first thought they were going to rescue. I thought they were going to rescue the dinosaurs and that the drama no. was going to be them rescuing the dinosaurs. The so second, then very, sorry, as maybe soon as I, they turned on them, I was like, oh wait, was this the movie? The second, the, the second he showed up with, here's the mission, and I'm a lovely, perfect, charming I guy. I'm like villain I believed him because I thought he was into Bryce Dallas and I thought that the main plot actually was going to be those two hooking up and then Chris Pratt getting really jealous so this shows how desperate I am for a rom-com that I invented one in my head for this stupid movie no you need to think there's always a pointless twist and yeah, I just al- wasn't expecting the twist to be in the first 15% of the movie and also like and very if, early for okay, a twist fine if you hadn't guessed it at that stage but if anyone hadn't guessed it by the time he shouted at the child for no reason well yeah when you, yeah but she's a clone not a child <laughs> right yeah um <laughs> There was some really. There was also besides some interesting visuals. There's some great little fun little ideas here, like the fact they have to give a dinosaur blood transfusion. I liked that, and I That's did enjoy the scene of them getting the blood out of the dinosaur. That I was loved, fun. I, that was fun. The yeah. dinosaur fashion show at the end. Yeah. Oh my god, that was amazing. <laughs> okay, that was my favorite bit of the whole movie. So for anyone who hasn't seen it, you shouldn't be listening to spoiler clapham. But anyway, spoiler common. Sorry. Um, so basically, there's all these rich old billionaires. One apparently from each country. So only one person from each country. So sold to the man from Singapore sold to the man from Russia so they were all flown in for this they're wearing tuxes and the very few women that are there are wearing like glittering ball gowns so it's like if you imagine a really glamorous auction scene but in the middle is this kind of runway that's on wheels and then there's these two like henchmen who are operating this thing with the lever and I was thinking so as as they push the lever dinosaurs go up through the people um, in cages. It's a catwalk. Well, they yeah, come, out the catwalk. The, come out the catwalk. I mean, it seems really safe. I think they're all perfectly safe to do that in a bunker. <laughs> and I just thought, how do they advertise this henchman's position? You know the way for these events, it would be like, post test needed, must have five years waitressing experience, whatever. This is like, henchmen needed to crank a catwalk <laughs> full of dinosaurs <laughs> in this perfectly safe environment. So that was the best bit. I think we both, another bit we did laugh at. But again, we're <laughs> laughing stupid. at the movie. We're not the laughing mo- with the movie. The movie did become increasingly stupid as soon as they left the island. And then I right. love when the dinosaurs inevitably escape in the setting that they're all completely shocked I know. like this is the most like, dangerous dinosaur that's again. ever existed we're selling it for 28 million dollars you can use it as a weapon of war which I did think was an interesting thing that they were investigating you know they could be used as weapons but then they didn't really do anything with it let's talk about the, the, the basic theme of this movie and the, the question that it poses at the very beginning the question is, that it poses should we be making a fifth movie <laughs> no no they, so they're trying to the dinosaurs are about to be extinct again and there's sort of this like there's this tribunal happening in which uh, Dr. Ian Malcolm played by Jeff Goldblum has been invited to speak Jeff um, Goldblum basically gave up like half a day to film this movie he's <laughs> yeah, like he just no get, and both I, just of his get, scenes, I just get to sit down here for the for fine and right. he bookended the movies at the start and the end in the same scene in the same outfit so he didn't even like change clothes to do two different scenes he's like I'm done with this but I, I think the the question why are they even holding this tribunal or asking this question when four separate 
horrific <laughs> evi- events have happened around these yeah. dinosaurs to date. And they're like, should we save them? Yeah, should um, we save them from this inevitable event that will just naturally kill them all? No, no, you really shouldn't. So it makes no sense. And also, my biggest problem with the whole movie is that Bryce Dallas Howard's character, Claire, is leading up the dinosaur rights um, program, trying to save the dinosaurs. That's her character. Yeah. However... You don't. You don't seem to remember the first movie. No. But in the first movie, I remember movie, that she wore heels running, and it annoyed me. And they did rectify that. They twice deliberately zoomed in on her feet to show that she was wearing like walking boots. <laughs> and I swear that's because of all the people who gave out about how stupid that was in the last movie. Because you don't normally zoom in on a character's boots. But in the in the first movie, she's this. Uh, she's like the head of marketing or something for this thing. Yeah. She has no interest in the dinosaurs. She's this power suit, high heel wearing <laughs> uh, former girlfriend of Chris Pratt. Yes, but blue. Who's there. Blue who's, changed everything, I'm she's, guessing. She's all about business and she's like on the phone all the time and she's like, no, we've got to keep the park open. Yeah, but she's then, just you can be on the phone and be interested in animal rights. At the no, same she has no. She actively, in, if, if, correct me if I'm wrong, anybody, because I haven't seen Jurassic World since we saw <laughs> and it. And we in don't the remember it. And <laughs> but we'll critique it anyway. But she, she had zero interest in this. So, so they well, just, the guy said, the Fanny referenced that. He said, like, this is your fault. You started it. He said, you two were yeah. the parents of this. Which, Which I, I, I thought quite, was I quite like that line. But what, why have they just, they've just retconned her character for no reason and now she's all about animal because rights. Because they like, need to make another movie. This is the problem with making well, hang sequels on, that shouldn't no, exist. No, you fine make a movie, but hang on. You could see an easy fix to all this. Chris Pratt is that character. No, but Chris Pat, Pratt's like a maverick lone ranger. He would never be spearheading like uh, fundraising parties. Then, that just then have a new character. No. Write a new character and don't have Bryce Dallas Howard in it again for no reason because the love plot didn't add anything. So that, firstly, that was a big problem for me to the point where the her point character, where you look really upset her character really was so invested in saving dinosaurs that she was hovering over a button by the end of the movie which would release them into... Oh, that was the worst part of the Into movie. the world. So uh, she's hovering over for, again, anyone who I hasn't seen it. can't let them die. So basically there's this bit at the end where they have the chance to keep all the, des- uh, the dinosaurs contained in this ridiculous mansion and let them be killed by some sort of gas. Just a, a or, convenient uh, deus ex machina yeah. gas. Or there's a big red button you can press that will release all of them and let them go outside. Now, obviously, there's one thing you would do, which is at this point, you know, you've tried your best to get the dinosaurs to a sanctuary... It's not worked out. It's also just happened again. Yeah. This is number five. This is the fifth time. So do you know what you do really if you're anyone else in the room? So the geeky tech guy or the female uh, dinosaur biologist or Chris Pratt, you actually would probably at this point just dive on Bryce Dallas Howard and say, look, I'm just going to (laughs) withhold you from having your hand over the button. Instead, they all stand by and let her make peace with her decision. It's up to you. It's up to you. you know, just think about it. We're not on an island this time. That's all I have That's to say. That's all he says. Yeah. He's not like... He's so respectful maybe, of her maybe decision. We should, like, maybe you shouldn't like irrevo- irrevocably change the, the, world. the face of our planet. And then she doesn't press it and that's a lovely moment. Next minute, cut to little girl, Harriet the Spy. Uh-oh, well, I'm a clone and I believe that uh, clones have rights. So therefore, I'm letting the dinosaurs out. And they're all like, okay, you do you, girl. I mean... It's a, look, it's a bold decision for the movie to make that suddenly... And I, I, it does feel like a setup for more sequels in which... And I think that's kind of interesting to me in that, hang on, now we're in a world where it's dinosaurs and humans living, uh, coexisting across the world. Yeah, but that's and silly. That just turns into, like, again, something I find a bit dull, but, like, The Walking Dead, the way it's just like, oh, the whole world's filled with zombies. We just fight against zombies every week. It's like I know, my problem with the new Westworld season. Like year. I loved the first season of Westworld where it was all in the park and Don't it was. Spoil I'm not spoiling Westworld, but season two has moved on, and for me, it's it, that's the same problem as when Jurassic Park moves into Jurassic World, which they use very heavy-handedly at the end. Welcome to Jurassic World. World, but this time he's not talking about the park. <laughs> he's, he's talking, talking about, about our planet. The, yeah, which I thought was actually kind of good because they used that line heavily in the trailer. Yeah, I mean they tied it and in. And he was actually talking about something different. But so. I just don't know how well praised you should be to like make the title of your movie actually fit the movie at the end. I mean, famously, I mean, I think that if uh, any movies that say the name of the movie in the t- in the movie, yeah, as dialogue tend to be dog shit unless it's Halloween because then to be fair you're referencing the time of year as well as, <laughs> well, fine, yeah. as, well as the movie so problematic also the there's there is another fundamental problem with this this movie in that it, it largely carries a sort of a, a, a animal rights welfare message in that that's our heroes are trying to save the dinosaurs actively because 
they exist and their life and they deserve a, a shot just like the rest of us whatever that's kind of Bryce Dallas Howard's position and that's our, that's the position of our heroes yet I think that kind of jars with um, Chris Pratt's real life affinity to hunting uh, which has been quite heavily he, he speaks openly about like he's pro hunting oh the man not the character the actor is which and I think yeah it's, but it's I mean actors don't when, do stuff and I, exactly and I think it's fine he is acting Fair at the enough. end of the day but I think it is slightly interesting when uh, I, I feel when an, when an actor's real life uh, views or attitudes or politics can conflict with the message of a movie that they are starring in and well, promoting well it depends on what you know about Chris Pratt because I didn't know that and also, even right as a two vegetarians who host this podcast, I don't give a shit about dinosaur animal rights. Like, if a dinosaur is coming down the street, I want someone to kill it. Like, dinosaurs are dangerous predators, you know. But we won't eat it. And it's not like we sharks. We won't eat the meat once it's been You know the way murdered. there's like a huge, uh, people have huge problems with them um, oh, sharks really being killed it. because like sharks at the end of the day will only attack you if you're in their habitat. And I agree with that, you know, just leave the sharks alone. Now, I'm in my own habitat in the middle of Clapham Common. If a fucking dinosaur comes charging at me and my baby, do I want someone to shoot it dead? Yes. Do I want them to be left roam free to their own devices? No. And I think it's a ludicrous standpoint that anyone would. And I did enjoy that the kind of geeky, techie scientist guy um, was in the side of like saving the dinosaurs. But then when it actually came to being around the dinosaurs, he was saying, like, I hope they're dead. Like, he didn't want to be around the dinosaurs. Like, it's all great when you're theorizing about saving animals. But Let actually, them die. when you're with dinosaurs, Kathy you don't Cullen. want them to be alive. Stay out of the shark yeah. habitat. Do you know Kathy what? Cullen. Do you think... I mean, I hope they don't, because as you said, it was a nice enough note to end it on. I hope that they don't make another one. They're going to make another one. But I think they'll make another one. Of course they're going to yeah. make another one. And I really think now we shouldn't go to the next one. Of course we're going to go to the next one. <laughs> Cut to three years from now, when we're in the same park for some reason. We're on social media. Please listen. Please follow us. I don't, what am I saying? Okay. I don't know what you're saying. At the Cinemile. Facebook, Twitter, well, Instagram. Well, let us know if you agree with Dave and that this is a mildly enjoyable romp, or me, and that it's Jump the Dinosaur. You just had to get the line in there Yeah, I just had to get it in again. Um, Please subscribe to us. If this is the first time you've listened to us, uh, we're on all of the podcast platforms. Just just go subscribe. And please do leave us a review on iTunes. Uh, It takes a couple of minutes, not even... I mean, if you just hit five stars on your phone, it takes all of three seconds. You basically go into your Apple podcast app, you search the cinema, you hit five stars. Um, because a lot of people listen to our podcast and a lot of people don't leave reviews the numbers don't quite add up between listeners and reviews and it means a lot to us that people leave us reviews it really helps us and you know we put a lot of work into this podcast we do it all by ourselves and we just do it for fun so it would be nice if you could do that thank you and that's the equivalent of you know when you see a busker and then you really (laughs) enjoy it and then at the end they go around with the the bucket and you're like oh and everyone walks away So so don't walk away Don't walk away, leave some money in our hat, and by that we mean leave us five stars on iTunes. Yes. Bye. Thanks for listening. ACAST powers the world's best podcasts. Here's a show that we recommend. Hey, I'm Kim Holderness. And I'm Ben Holderness. We host the Holderness Family Podcast every Tuesday. You may know us from the silly videos that we make online. Or a book about marriage called Everybody Fights. Or as winners of season 33 of The Amazing Race. Still can't believe that happened. Listen, we do a lot of stuff, but our podcast is our most favorite thing. Yeah, because every week we get to sit down face to face, talk to each other about marriage, family, mental health, or just anything that we want to know more about. Sometimes we have expert interviews. Sometimes it's just us. But our goal is to bring some joy and laughter into your life every week. Our other goal is that maybe you will learn something as well. Right. So search the Holderness Family Podcast and check out our most recent episodes. We have one about staying organized with creators of the Home Edit. And one about being diagnosed with ADHD as an adult. We hope you'll join us. Acast helps creators launch, grow, and monetize their podcasts everywhere. Acast.com.